Praise the Lord, everybody. Today's the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and, come on somebody, be glad in it. Welcome to Better Self Night Bible Study. I'm your pastor, Robin McKenzie. Are y'all ready to hear a word from the Lord? We are on the fourth part of Do You Know God? Hey, listen, if you're a visitor, I ask that you will push the subscribe button and put turn on your notifications so you can be notified when I come on to give you the word from the Lord. I ask that you will forward somebody. Let's get our numbers up. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, uh, YouTube, Community Church Family, Twitter, Community Church Family. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight for a word from the Lord. Amen. Be in agreement with me as I pray. And uh, let's get our help because we can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so let's let's get our help and let's see what the Lord wants to say to us today. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, in Jesus name. Lord, we thank you so much, Father, for this opportunity to surround ourselves with the word of God. And Father, we thank you, Father, for being in our company. You are welcome in this place. We ask for your presence to be among us everywhere in people's houses, in their cars, wherever they are, I thank you for your presence being with them. Lord, we thank you that you are omnipresent. You're everywhere at all times. Now, Father, I ask that the Holy Spirit will cause the complex of your word to be made simple, that we may have understanding, that we may be built up and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. And now, Father, I ask that you would anoint every ear to hear and every heart to receive, that our lives will be changed by the transforming power of the word of God. We thank you that your word is incorruptible seed that produces the God kind of life. And to you alone, we give all the praise, all the honor and glory with thanksgiving for all that's about to be accomplished and revealed in Jesus' name we pray, and the body of Christ said, Amen. Amen. And the body of Christ shouted, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And we're going to pick up in verse 13, our foundational text. This is when Jesus asked the disciples who he was. But then he got up and personal and said, but who do you say that I am? And it's important that you know God for yourself. Many of you know God because mama and them told you about him. Many of you know God because you heard about him. And, not, and hearing about God is not the same as knowing God for yourself. So what do you know God is really all about? It's about you really knowing God. I'm not talking about tradition. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about do you really know God? Amen. All right. Verse 13. When Jesus came to the coast of Syria, Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that the son of man am? And they said, look what they said. Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But he said unto them, but whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter. And upon this rock, on this rock of revealed knowledge or revelation knowledge, I'm going to build you up, glory to God. And you're going to be so strong that the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. When you know God, you will be strong. And the Bible says you become unstoppable. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And this is what the gates of hell not being able to prevail against is all about. He said the, when you know God for yourself, the devil can throw his best at you and it won't faze you because you are strong in the Lord your God because you know who God is for yourself. Amen. Look at Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 11 
and verse 32. We're going deeper tonight, y'all. Glory to God. This is part four. Hallelujah. It says, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God, they shall be what class? Strong and do great exploits. They shall do exploits. Notice what he said. For the people who know their God, he says, they shall be strong. They shall be strong. Amen. They shall be strengthened. The ability to stand. See, do you know God? It's all about knowing God for yourself. And the Bible says that the people who do know their God, they'll be strong and they'll do things unhumanly. Amen. Exploits. They'll do it in an unhumanly way. So we found out that, that, that you can go to church for years and not know God. You can, you, can, you can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and not know God. Mm, mm, mm. You, can, you can pray and not know God. You can, you can know 20 praise and worship songs and not know God. Haven't you ever questioned how can people go to church for years and still act like they unsaved? It's because they don't know God. They know tradition. They know religion. But knowing tradition and religion don't mean that you know God. John chapter 17 and verse 3 in the Living Bible says this. And this is the way to have eternal life. To know you. The only true God. And Jesus Christ, the one you have sent to earth. And this is the way to eternal life that they may know you. Ah, glory to God. Eternal life is not just all about going to heaven, y'all. Eternal life is not dying here and going into the by and by. Eternal life is you experiencing the very nature and life of God in you today on earth. You don't have to go to heaven to experience eternal life. Eternal life is the nature of God. And the Bible says that in the book of, of Philippians, I mean, first Peter, the first Peter chapter, second Peter chapter one and verse three says, according to his divine power, have given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Uh Oh, his divine power have given unto us life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Knowing who God is, is what causes the divine power to change your life and cause you to do exploits. And he says, according, according to, uh, um, um, that you and may know, watch this, that you may be partaker of his divine nature, that you may escape the corruption that is in the world. So eternal life is what helps you escape the corruption that's in this world. Knowing God is how you escape, glory to God, the corruption that's in this world. And we live in a world today, y'all, corruption is everywhere. Oh my God, we are, we are in a world where things are uncertain, glory to God. And this is a time where you cannot afford to not know who God is in your life. This is not a time for you to be hoping and a guessing, Lord, should I take this? this shot or shall I not take this shot? You need to know what God is saying to you. Amen. Glory to God. You need to know who God is in these times we're in today. And notice what he says. And this is the way to eternal life that they may know you. He said, look, Lord, the way to eternal life is knowing you. Amen. But then Jesus said in John chapter five, verse 39 in the living Bible, Jesus said, you search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life. You think they give you eternal life. But we just found out the way to eternal life is what? To know him. Amen. But he says you search the scriptures because you think you have eternal life. So many of you, you have searched the scriptures so much that the Bible reading is boring to you. You have gotten so familiar with scriptures but ignorant of God. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, I don't think you caught that. I said you are so familiar with scripture, but ignorant of God. Because Jesus said you think you have eternal life because you know the scriptures. But yet, look what he says now. But the scriptures point to me. The scriptures do what? Point to me. Yet you refuse. Uh-oh. You refuse to come to me 
to receive this life. Notice y'all. He said, look, y'all reading the scriptures, but that's what the scripture is doing. Pointing to Jesus. He said, but yet you refuse. See, we live in a world today where so many people are blinded. There's a judicial blindness and there's also a, a blindness that comes through lack of understanding. And so the, the judicial blindness is the people who know the truth, but don't want to know it. Know the truth, know what to do, but turn their ears to it. They don't want to hear it. That's a judicial blindness. Y'all got that? But then there's a blindness that comes through ignorance. Because only that it is recorded in, in the scripture in the New Testament where there is the opening eyes of the blind. You will never find recorded in the Old Testament where the blind eyes were open. The reason why there's no record of the blind eyes opening in the Old Testament is because the covenant, the new covenant wasn't arrived in order for your eyes to be open. The Old Testament is Jesus Christ concealed. The New Testament is Jesus Christ revealed. Did y'all get that? I said the Old Testament is Jesus Christ concealed, but the New Testament is Jesus Christ revealed revealed. And so the two blind men, they came to Jesus Christ and said, son of David, have mercy on us. Uh Oh, wait a minute. Wait. Oh my God. Oh, there's some truth in this. I want to take you here, but for the sake of time, I want to talk you through it. Glory to God. Watch this now. How is it that these blind men follow Jesus? Mm. But the people who had eyes, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, didn't follow him or didn't know him. Ain't that something? It take blind men <laughs> to follow Jesus. See, a lot of people miss this. They were blind, but the scripture says they were following Jesus. How did these blind men follow Jesus? But the people who said they can see <laughs> didn't know him enough to follow him. They said, son of David. So they knew something about covenant. They knew something that David would come out of the genealogy, that Jesus would come out of the genealogy of David. Because the Bible said, for his kingdom shall have no end when God spoke this to David lineage. And Jesus came out of that lineage. So it was talking about the new covenant, the new creation. So the eyes were open. And watch this now. But then he says, uh, see that you tell nobody after he opened their eyes. Somebody said, open my eyes, Lord. After he opened their eyes, he says, see to it that you tell nobody. And the scripture says, and they went and told everybody in the village. Somebody say, having faith, having faith. without obedience. obedience. It's possible to have faith and not have obedience. He told them, hey, y'all, see that you don't tell nobody. But they went and told everybody. Because you can have faith and not have any obedience. Amen. 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 And so to open the eyes of the blind, blind. See, the, Paul, his eyes wasn't open because his blind, he was able to see before his eyes were shut. Amen. His eyes were open before God set his eyes on the road of Damascus in chapter nine of Acts and the epistles. So, so. Uh, and so um, when, when, when God opened Paul's eyes, his, his eyes wasn't open. His eyes wasn't open of the blind, but it was recorded in Matthew twice where the blind eyes were opened. But Mark has a record of it being one time, but Matthew have it twice. So Matthew have the most time of the blind eyes been opened. So watch this, y'all. Many people, they have eyes, but they cannot see. They're walking around blind saying hallelujah. They're walking around blind saying the Bible say. They're walking around blind, oh my God. They're walking around blind but saying, uh, 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 singing worship songs. They're walking around blind because, watch this now, either they are ignorant of uh, 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 who God is and who they are, or, or they just turning their backs against the truth and resisting the truth. That's why the children of Israel, I mean, uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees, Jesus wept over the city because he says only if they knew the things that were pertaining to their peace. He wept over the city because they were blind that because they did not see, because they did not want to hear the truth that Jesus brought on the scene. And it's important that you know 
who you are today. But if you don't know who God is, you will not know who you are. When you know who you are, are, the Bible says your faith will become effective according to Philemon chapter one and verse six. When you know who you are, your faith becomes effective. And so many of us, we don't know who we are because we don't know who he is. Amen. And it's time for us to know who God is. Now let's go back to Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. It says, and for the people who do know their God, they shall be strong and do, oh, and do. So God, the Holy Spirit, led me to look up the word do. And the word do is a Hebrew word called, um, it's called all y'all. It's called also, A-W-S-A-W. Somebody say also. Say it again, also. Okay, it means to commit. It means to exercise. Glory to God. So to know God is to be committed to God no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing. You must be committed to God no matter what. I mean, you must be willing to stay right there. Amen. No matter what you're facing, you're going to be committed to God. No matter what you're going through, you're going to be committed to God. No matter who walked out your life, you're going to stay committed to God. No matter who don't help you, you're going to be committed to God. No matter who didn't give you the job, you're going to stay committed to God. No matter who, glory to God, I'm talking about the Bible says, they who are committed to God. Amen. They shall do exploits, the unhumanly. They shall do the amazing. They shall do some amazing things. I'm telling you. And another translation says, and for the people who do know their God, they shall be strong and take a stand. Amen. So many of you proving you don't know God because you're not taking a stand when you're facing the trouble, when you're facing some difficulty. You're not taking a stand. You're going off into your disobedience, proving that God, I don't know you in this. I knew you when things were well, but God, things ain't so well with me. Therefore, God, I'm not going to be committed. I'm not going to be consistent in walking in love. You don't know what they did to me. I'm not going to be consistent in forgiveness. You don't know how bad they hurt me. God, I'm not going to be committed to giving. You don't know it's tight on my nickels. God, I can't. Oh, glory to God. And so I'm telling you, so the Bible says when you know God, it's to be committed to God. Somebody say amen. To that. Now, Daniel chapter three. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't want you to have eyes, but you can't see because you're resisting the truth of God's word because you don't want to hear it. See, those who were blind were those who knew the truth, but didn't have ears to hear it. The Bible called them blind. Then there are those who are blind simply because they don't understand. Hallelujah. Now watch this, y'all. Verse one of Daniel chapter three, get your Bibles out and follow along with me because I want you to learn something. I don't want you to just tune in just to say I fulfilled a religious activity or some religious duty. No, this is about knowing God. This is about knowing God for yourself. When I got revelation of who God is, it changed my life. It caused me to supersede those in the family who said they knew God. There's only one person that I know that knew God, and that was my Auntie Nora. My Auntie Nora knew who God is. She knew who God was. Therefore, God had her praying for me when I was out being disobedient and rebellion. It was her knowing God and being committed to pray for me. Shata, woo, but pray for me and cover me until I came to know God for myself. She said there was something about me that was special that she knew God had his hand on me, but I didn't know who God was at the time, but God hand 
Jesus was all over me, protecting me from every hurt, harm, and danger. And I'm telling you, I got to know God in my downest time. I come to know God when I was in prison facing years. I would come to know God when I was forsaken and rejected by my family. I came to know God when I didn't have no money. I came to know God when I was bound by heroin and crack cocaine and an alcoholic and rejection and child abuse. I came to know God not when I was on a mountaintop. I came to know God when I was down in the valley because many of you you say you know God, but you ain't been through enough to prove that you do know him. See, some of you ain't been through nothing to say you know God. You only know some tradition. You only know some religion. You only know what others say about God, but you have no personal knowledge of God for yourself. I know you don't know God when you say, oh, God is good because I woke up this morning. What a very low level of his goodness just to connect it to you are alive but did you not know that the attic woke up this morning did you not know the man under the bridge woke up this morning did you not know people woke up this morning you mean to tell me the only goodness you can testify about God is that you woke up this morning you only reveal to me how much very little you know about God because the Bible says he daily loaded us with benefits. That should be something that I can say good about God on the daily. But if you don't know him, you will not be, you will not see him and you will take all the credit or you will miss what he's doing because you don't know him. Amen. And it's time for you to know God. Daniel chapter three and verse one. Nebuchadnezzar, the king made an image of gold whose height was three, three scores cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits, and he set it up in the plain of Dora in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princesses and the governors and the captains and the judges and the treasurers of the, and the counselors and the sheriffs and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king have set up. Now here it is, King Nebuchadnezzar has set up an image. Oh, y'all got to hear me tonight. He set up an image and called everybody of power into this dedication. He called the governors. He called the sheriffs. He called the judges. He called the Democrats. He called the Republicans. He called everybody to this dedication to, to, to talk about the importance of bowing down to this image that he has set up. Stay with me now. Verse three, then the, the princes and the governors and captains and judges and treasures and counselors and sheriffs and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image and Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And then and Herod cried aloud to you, it is commanded, O people, nations and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the posturery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king have set up. Now here it is. This man have set up a golden image and called every people of every nation to bow down to the image that the world has set up. I'm telling you, when you don't know God, you will bow down to the image the world is half set up. You will bow down to the image of strife you, because the world set up. You will bow down to discord the world has set up. You will bow down to the false images that the world has set up. You will bow down to the image of that you, you want likes off Facebook or off Instagram to validate your importance, to bow down to the image that they have set up. Set up. Watch this now. Verse 8. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Somebody say, God's people. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the heart, the sack, but the posture, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso fall not down and worship, 
that he should be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Let me tell you something about the devil. He took Jesus up to the high of the pinnacle and told Jesus, if you will bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. It's sad to say that many of God's people are no longer serving God, but they have bowed down to the offer the devil has given them in the world. They bow down to the offer of their job. Their job has taken place of God. They bow down to their careers. They have taken the place of God. <clears throat> They're bowing down to their relationships that has taken the place of God. They bow down to their activities and their sports. Because the Bible says anything that usurps the place of God is an idol. Modern day idolatry is anything that you place before God. Mm, mm, mm. And so the, you got to understand that the enemy in his craftiness have set up idols, images, hallelujah, and want you to bow down to them. Verse 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fire, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. What was they doing? They were staying committed to God because they knew what the words say. Thou shalt not have no other God before him, only shalt thou serve. Thou shalt not serve any other idols. Who they were committed to God. And so he calls and sends for them. Do you not serve my gods nor worship the golden image which I've set up? Now, if you be ready, then at the time you heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sap, the parsley, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I, which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast in the same hour to the midst of the burning fire furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Somebody say, oh, He said, who is that God? Now, hold up. That God you trusting? Let me see if he can rescue. Oh, my God. Let me see if he can deliver you out of my hands. I'm in position mm, that I got the power to burn you to crisp. I got the power to set you free. But Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, Nebuchadnezzar did not know who their God was. And I'm telling you people of God, you need to know who your God is where you'll be able to take a stand when the devil tell you you're not going to make it. You need to know who your God is when the doctor tell you you got six months to live. You need to know who your God is when they deny you from the house that you've been believing for. You need to know who your God is when you've been told no over and over and over again. He said, who is this God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer you in this manner. Oh, these boys is bossed up because guess what? When you know God, you are bold as a lion. When you know God, you don't fear what people say they can do to you. You don't fear what other harm trying to do to you. When you know God, you trust in God to protect you. You trust in God to defend you. You trust in God to be your refuge. You trust in God to be your fortress. You trust in God to be your protector. Under his wings will I trust. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. I will not be afraid of the terror that fly by night, nor of the arrows that fly by day, nor of the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor of the destruction that waste at noonday. Though a thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I see the reward of the wicked who's trying to bring my downfall. And because I set my love upon God, he will honor me. He will be with me in a time of trouble. He will deliver me. With long life will he satisfy me because he will show me his salvation. When you know who your God is, you'll be able to stand firm and be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they said, we don't need to answer you in this manner, O king. Watch this now. If it be so, our God, whom we serve. Somebody said, I serve the same God. He's able to deliver us from this burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us 
out of thy hand, O king. But if not, if he choose not to move when I want him to, I'm still going to stay committed. I'm not bowing. Some of y'all done already bowed. That's why you can't say amen. You done already bowed to unbelievers. You done already done bowed to those who are offended and they came to you with their offense and moved you to bow to their offense. It's crazy how you would take on somebody else's offense and bow. Woo Even though the person who you offended at ain't done nothing to you, you just following other folks' image. Hey, glory to God. You bowing down to an offended image along with those who've been offended. Whether it's your pastor, whether it's your cousin, whether it's Raheem, whether it's your baby daddy, whether it's your baby mama, it don't matter. They will turn your heart south, glory to God, to the wrong image that they have already been bowed to. Now they done presented the image to you and because you don't know God, you done took on the same image they got. That's what the Bible says. Make no friends with an angry, offended person, lest you learn their ways and become a snare to your soul. Some of y'all are learning the ways of the devil through people, and you're not learning the ways of God through people because you're following those who don't have the godly image. You ain't following those who have a righteous image. You're not following those who have a, 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 a holy image. Oh my God. But you're following those who have no foundation foundation, those who don't know their God. And he says, let me tell you something. We ain't bowing down. If God, if you don't show up, let it be known to your king that we'll not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury and the form of the vintage was changed against Saturday, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was won't be to be heated. Somebody say seven times hotter. I'm going to still stand. <laughs> it don't matter how hot it get, baby. You come to know God when it get hot. <laughs> they said, if you can't stand the heat, stay out the kitchen. I'm telling you, many people, they get from up under the heat. Why? Because guess what? It got too hot for them. They said, God, look, I thought I knew you, but I'm good. It's too hot. I'm going over here. Lord, I, <laughs> I, 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 look, God, I ain't going to Bible study no more. It's too tight on me right now. I ain't even got a job right now. I got <laughs> look, because watch this, because the dirt will turn the fire up seven times hotter. See, but what you don't know is when the fire get turned up, watch this. That's when your knowledge of God get turned up. I said, when the fire get turned up, that's when the, your knowledge of God get. Because you only get to know who he is when you stay committed in your fiery situation. Amen. So Meshach, Shadrach, and Ben going to turn up. He got mad. Because when you start taking a stand for God, folks going to get mad at you. <laughs> when you take a stand for God, see, it's easy to not take a stand. That's why so many people are not standing. Because it's easy to not take a stand. But it takes power to take a stand. It takes strength to take a stand. It takes faith to take a stand. But guess what, y'all? When you don't know God, <laughs> when you don't know God, you will, not, you will not stay loyal. Amen. You will not stay loyal to your church. You will not stay loyal to your marriage. You will not, not stay loyal to your family. You will not stay loyal to anything. Why? Because you don't know God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Because it's time for you to stop fooling yourself saying you know God when really in your heart you don't know him. Because God know more, God know more about you than what you really said about you. You have said some stuff, hallelujah, but the God says you do honor me with your mouth and you do praise me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. So God said, look, I know you. I know you putting on some church act. I know you being very traditional. I know you're very religious and the, your commitment, your lack of commitment proved that you don't know me. You're not committed to walking in love. You're not committed to giving. You're not committing to forgiving. You're not committed to uh, living godly. You're not committing to living holy. And you're saying you know me. How dare you know me when I put in my word, they who say they know me and yet walk in darkness is lying and don't practice the truth. So I'm trying to give you understanding that you cannot play with God in the in this pandemic that we're facing today. There's so much uncertainty, but one thing you and I got that is certain, and that is the word of God. That is 
our God. He is certain. He can be depended on. He is reliable. He is trustworthy. And one thing we have as an anchor to our soul, and that is the word of God. And I'm telling you, y'all, it's not only knowing the word, it's being committed to the word. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they stay committed. Watch this. Verse 21. Then these men were bound in their coats and, 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 and their and the horses. And the hosen and their hats and their other garments were cast into the midst of the burning fire furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up me sacrificed and Benigo. It's amazing when you know God, the very ones who want you to fall is the very ones that get burned. <laughs> I said the very ones that want you to fall in the fire is the very one that gets shamed by the burn of that fire. Amen. Watch this now. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down into the midst of the burning fire furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spoke and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king, it was only three of them. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loosed, walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt. 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 They have no hurt. Because when God is in the fire with you, when you stay committed to God in the midst, when everybody else walk out on you because it's hot, there will be no hurt. I said there will be no hurt because God is with you and he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. No, never. And there will be no hurt. Why? Because God is in that fire with you. I don't care how difficult your situation is. I don't care how hot it is. God is in that with you. And because he's with you, you coming out with no hurt. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And the form of the fourth it's like the son of God. Verse 26. Let's see what Nebuchadnezzar is talking about now. Somebody said, what they talking about now? Because we're going to look, look it's, it, it's what they talking about now when you come out that fire. See, when you come out that fire and you, you shine like pure gold, because only when you stand the test of the fire, you are refined and ready for your assignment. Some of y'all are not ready for your assignment because you ain't stood the test of the fire. Some of y'all want to know God, but you can't stand a little fingernail broke on your hand. You want to know God, but you hurt, you hit your toe on the bed and you're ready to relapse. You, ah, oh my God, you, 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 you want the assignment, but you don't want the preparation for the assignment. Do you know God? Do you know God? The moment we go through something, the first thing we say, God, why are you doing this to me? God, why? Why? When you're asking him for a better life, aren't you? You're asking him to promote you, aren't you? You're asking him to be a better husband, aren't you? You're asking him to be a better wife, aren't you? Well, you got to go through some suffering. You got to go through some suffering. So a lot of y'all, y'all want to reign with Jesus, but you don't want to suffer with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thank God for my sufferings. Oh, glory to God. I thank you, Father, for my sufferings. I thank you, God, that only in our sufferings we come to know you. Hallelujah. In a way we never knew you before. Watch this. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning furnace, and he spoke and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come out. Come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the midst of the fire. And the prince of the governor and the captains and the king counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Somebody say, my situation ain't got no power because I know God. <laughs> say, what I'm going through have no power because I know God. Amen. Nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, <laughs> Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any other God except their own God. These boys knew who God was. 
they knew who God was. And it's time for you to know who God is. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, language will speak anything amiss against the God of Meshach, Son, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God <laughs> like the God that we serve. There is no other God like the God that we serve. Ah, my God, the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jesse, and David, and Jesus, and Pastor Robert McKenzie. Watch this. He says, he says, there's no other God. Now remember, first he said, who is that God? First, he says, who is that God that can deliver you? Huh? He questioned who God was. But notice when he came to know God, he came to know God through their commitment. The only way that people come to know who God is, is through your commitment to God. The reason why you people don't know who God is, because God's people are not committed. God's people will not stand, but become a stumbling block to those who are really looking for God. And those who are really looking for God, watch this now, that's why you got to be careful with those who have an influence around you. You got to really watch those who got an influence, because there is a spirit, watch this now, that's dominating people because of an influence, and is leading people after them, which causing them to bow to the image of the individual and not the image of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that your destiny is for you to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ, the firstborn among many brethren. So you are only to be conformed to the image of Jesus. You're not to be conformed to the image of so-and-so because that's who you're following. Whoo, my God, I'm preaching really good tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We following people because the blind can't lead the blind. Jesus said they both will fall into a ditch. You need to stop following folks who blinded when it comes to God and start following Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. They who led by the Spirit of God, for they are sons and daughters of God. You following people when you should be following the Holy Spirit. Mm. And so because you don't know God, you're following your impulses and your emotions and what others say and not what the word say. Somebody say commitment. Expresses my knowing. Say commitment expresses my knowing. See, when you know God, you'll be committed to him. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, watch this now. So, it's a, to commit. So, they stayed committed to God in their fire. That proved that they knew him. And you can't tell me you know God when every time the enemy come up to you with any fire situation, you forsake God's ways for your life. The moment the fire get turned up, you relapse and go back to smoking weed again. You relapse and go to drinking again. When the enemy turned the fire up, you were doing well at one point. But the enemy said, oh, okay, let me turn this fire up. One, two, click, 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 three, four, click, 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 five, click. Oh, they still ain't, they still ain't bound yet? Up, oh, seven. <laughs> and it gets so hot, we forsake our commitment. Not knowing in that fire mm, is where God shows up. The Bible says he shall be called a flame of fire. It was when the burning, burn, the, the fiery burning bush is when Moses had a God encounter. It was when he saw the bush burning with fire but wasn't being consumed is when he met God. Mm. <sighs> Count it all joy when you face any fiery trial, knowing this, that the testing of your faith, you ain't doing nothing being a faith test. Your situation ain't nothing but a faith test. I said, your situation, what you're going through, it don't matter what you're going through. It ain't nothing but a faith, faith test. test. It's only proving how much you really know who God is. Because you don't know who God is until you take a faith, faith test. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Do you know God? See, you don't know God because you can pray in tongues. You don't know God because you remember Oh, the, 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 the number one hit praise songs. You don't know God because you made it to the, you make it to the building twice a week. You don't know God 
just because you cool and you got the pastor's number. <laughs> you know God when you can trust him enough to stay committed to him, to bring you out of your difficult situation. I said, you know God when you trust him enough to stay committed to him, to bring you out of your difficult situation. You know God when you can cast all of your cares over upon him, knowing he will turn your situation around. <laughs> You know God. Hallelujah. When you cast your cares on him and you get you some rest because he give his beloved sleep. You know God when you don't stay up late eating the bread of sorrows. You know God we don't walk around meditating on your lacks. Mm. You know God when you're not walking around uh, meditating on how you're going to pay this and pay that. Most of the time we walk around with images in our mind that's not God, but meditating on the wrong images of our senses and our logic which causes us to cancel God out and put ourselves in a position of being our own resource and pray our own provider, our own protector, which proves to others we don't know God. Do you know God to bless those who curse you? To, to do good to those who hate you, to pray for those who despitefully mistreat you and persecute you and say all manners of evil against you falsely that you may be like my father in heaven. Do you know God? <laughs> ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. When people persecute me, I'm praying for them. You know why? I know God. <laughs> Amen. I'm blessing their families. I'm blessing their careers. I, and I'm doing it genuinely because guess what? If it don't mean nothing to you, it don't mean nothing to God. See, the reason why a lot of y'all prayers are not effective for those you're praying for, because you don't love the one that you're praying for. And if you don't love who you're praying for, your prayer will not be effective for the one you're praying for. Many people are praying for so-and-so, but hoping they ain't got to go through what so-and-so is going through. So I'm praying for so-and-so, but guess what? I hope I never got to go through what so-and-so is going through until I end up in the place what so-and-so going through. Now I can pray in agreement with so-and-so because I can relate to what so-and-so going through. Now I can pray with power. Now we can cry out like the two blind men, Jesus have mercy on me. But you can't cry out when I'm blind over here calling for God and you over there talking about me like a dog. And that's what we're doing and saying hallelujah, praise the Lord. If you push like, God will send something in your mail. You're going to get a check in the mail for your breakthrough. 2022 is your year of restoration and unprecedented prosperity. <laughs> Nah, ain't no formulas to this. There is no formulas. Seven steps to a dynamic turnaround. <laughs> no, there is no formulas. It's all about him. It's all about him. It's knowing him. Church is all about knowing him. But when we go to church, everybody want to be in position of power. Everybody want to control something. Guess what? But, it, but the power is God. The power is all about God. It's about him. He the one got the power. Positions don't give me power. God got all the power. So when I go to church, it should be all about him. Do you? 
know God. Amen. Do you know God? When he bless you and victimize you at the same time. <laughs> Somebody say, say that again, Pastor. Do you know God? When God bless you, he also victimizes you. What do you mean? When he bless you, <laughs> people put crosshairs on you to hate on you. <laughs> so not only when God bless you, you become a victim too. <laughs> ah, glory to God. Jesus said, in, uh, and Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, for all that desire to live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Guess what, y'all? Blessings is godly. And the Bible says they who, so they who desire to live godly, who desire to live in the blessing, prosperity is godly. Favor is godly. Healing is godly. Wisdom is godly. Deliverance is godly. Unity is godly. Hallelujah. And he said, for all who desire to live godly in Christ shall suffer what? Persecution, somebody say bless and a victim at the same time. Mark said in chapter 10 and verse 30, with the hundredfold blessing come with persecution. Somebody say, when God bless me, I got to know him because <laughs> persecution coming when he blessed me. <laughs> but see, let me tell you something. When you don't know him, you'll scale back on the blessing because folks going to criticize you and talk about you and try to count your pin pockets. <laughs> they count your pockets. Amen. When they should be looking at the God you serve. They're not looking at the God. They're too busy looking at your hymns of your garment. <laughs> I'm having fun. I'm having fun, but I'm anointed all at the same time. Because this is what I do. That's why he called me. Amen. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 26 and verse 13, 14. The Bible says that when he blessed uh, uh, Jacob with a hundredfold, when he blessed Isaac with a hundredfold, the man increased and waxed great. And the Bible says, and the Philistines envied him. What am I showing you? I'm only showing you that when God bless you, he make you a victim all at the same time. But guess what? If you don't know him, you ain't ready for the blessing. <laughs> I said, if you don't know him, you ain't ready for the blessing. What, why? Because it comes with persecution. If you can't handle the persecution, God said you ain't ready for the blessing. And if you ain't ready for the blessing, because you don't know me, mm, mm, mm. do you know God? When you can't pay your bills, can you stay committed to God and giving? Believing for his promise of prosperity? When you only give when you're at the top, but don't give when you're in a tight place, it's proof that you don't. Because only when I stay committed in my giving, when things are scarce, is when I come to know God as Jehovah Jireh. Many don't know God as Jehovah Jireh because they never stay committed during tough times. So when things get tight on them, they stop giving so they never come to know God as their provider because they never experience him coming through when things are tough. Ah, glory to God. Watch this. Can you say, can you stay committed to walking in love when your relationships are in trouble, trusting his promise for restoration? Can you stay committed in that relationship? Amen. When the other part of that, the other spouse is being rebellious and disobedient and you see no change. Can you stay committed because you know God, because you trust in God that when he says in first Peter chapter three and verse one that said wives stay subject to your husbands in everything that if any don't obey the word that they without a word, without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. God says, if you stay at it, boom, if you stay at it, baby, guess what? I deal with him and you'll win him over because you'll here begin to see me in you. 
Amen. But you know why he won't come to God? He's too busy seeing you with your nasty attitude. He's so busy seeing you with your stank and dank, dank mind mentality. He's too busy seeing you. But if you would get out of the way and get committed to God and stay in there and don't move, no wonder Moses said, be still and see the salvation of God. Stay in there. Keep on doing the will of God and watch God work. I'm staying with it, God. I know it looked like things ain't changing. It looked like everybody is against me. It looked like, but I know if I hang in there, you said, I will not fail. You said, if I stay in there, don't lose heart. I shall reap. If I faint not, I shall win if I don't quit. I'm telling you, people of God, so many of God's people are quitting on him because they don't know him. They are quitting serving him because they don't know him. They only know him when things were going well, but they stopped knowing him when the PPP ran out. Amen. They, I'm telling you that when the PPP gone, they walked away from G-O-D when the PPP left. Woo and I'm telling you, some of y'all, you was praising and shouting when the PPP was here. Now the PPP is gone. <laughs> Woo! Now you won't, you can't even shout no more. <laughs> Amen. And I'm laughing because I know I'm right. Amen. We only praise God and serve him conveniently. But the moment things get tough, we prove we don't know him. When that's the time when people are watching all the more, they're watching how you handle touch situations. They're watching how you handle your difficulty because they really want to know if God is real. And when they're watching you, mm, how you handle coming through your situation, it shows them whether or not God is real or not. And you trying to explain to your children that God is good, but they watch mama and they watch daddy don't stand firm in their commitment to prove to them that this is what you must do until God comes through. They end up watching you take matters in your own hand and do things your own way. But then you're trying to tell them you don't do what I do. You do what I say. You don't do what I do. No, they going to do what you do as well as what you say. Because when you say don't do this, they're going to be curious why you doing it and not want me to do it. And so I want to see what's to this that mama doing it because I love mama. And I want to see what's to this that daddy's doing it. That, and I want to, I love dad. So why would dad tell me don't do it and he's doing it? So, uh, Oh, okay, that's why he said don't do it. Oh, these grapes. Mm. Oh, these grapes. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. It's time to know God. What am I doing? I'm driving out tradition. I'm driving out religion. To reveal to you that you only come to know God when you stay committed in your tough times. Amen. What you're going through, I'm telling you, to know God, you got to go through something and stay committed while you're going through. So when God bring you out, guess who get the glory? God get the glory. You get the glory, why? Because you did things his way while you were going through. You didn't do things your way. You didn't let your emotions govern you. You didn't let your negative attitude get in the way. You trusted God. Let's look at some scriptures. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21, please. First Peter, and I'm wrapping up, I'm done. This is right time, 722, right? Amen. 702, what I say, 722? Amen. First Peter chapter 2. All right, look at verse 21, please. <clears throat> even for even one to you were called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example 
that you should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found on his mouth, who when he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but, come on somebody, committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self bear our sins and his own body on a tree, that we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes? Ain't you glad he stayed committed to God? He said, look, when he was reviled, he didn't revile in return. He didn't retaliate. But what did the Bible say he did? Committed himself. <laughs> he committed himself. Look at Hebrew chapter 5, verse 8. Matter of fact, don't turn there. Write it down. Hebrew 5, 8 says, and Jesus learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Are you learning through your suffering? Or are you complaining through your suffering? Because if all you're doing is complaining in your suffering, you'll never come to know God. Because the children of Israel, all they did was complain in their suffering through their wilderness experience when all it was designed for is for them to come to know God because he had a promised land waiting for them. God got your promise waiting on you. But if all you're doing is complaining while you're going through and you never come to know him, you will breach what God has planned. Mm. They breached and uh, breach me altered. They altered God's purpose for their lives because all they did was complain about their situation and not surrender to God in their difficulty. They didn't commit. Mm. Job stayed committed to God when all hell broke loose in his life. Joseph stayed committed to God when all hell broke loose in his life, he was betrayed by his family and thrown in a pit and lied on by Potiphar's wife, thrown in the prison, from prison to the palace because he stayed committed. David stayed committed to God when he was under, was given a promise to be king and he was put up under a spiritual father named Saul and Saul was jealous of him and tried to kill him and he ran from cave to cave and city to city, but he stayed committed to God that proved he knew him. Three Hebrew boys stayed committed to God when they was thrown into the burning fiery furnace. No matter how hot they turned the fire up, they stayed committed. That proves that they know God. Will your testimony be, I stayed committed to God in all the hell I've been through? I'm going to stay committed to God when all who witnessed your commitment will say, oh, they know God <laughs> when they witness how you stood firm. That's why I love to see what spiritual sons and, and daughters stand firm in when tight spots and, and they will come to me for encouragement. And I tell them, watch God work because when you stay committed, don't you give up. You stay right there. You let God work. He cannot lie. You let God be God because he sees you and he will never forsake you. He will never leave you. Even when you don't sense his presence, he's closer to you than he ever was when you were on the top. And I'm telling you, and I encourage them to stay right there because God is with you. He's bringing you through. You're going to come out better. You're going to come out richer. You're going to come out righteous. You're going to come out healed. You're going to come out delivered. You're going to come out with double for your trouble. And others will come to know God because of your steadfast commitment to God. Can I give you one more scripture before I wrap it up? I really, because I'm done with Do You Know God series, and I want to, I want to show you this scripture in 1 Peter, hallelujah, chapter 4, hallelujah, glory to God, and let's look at verse 12, verse 12, beloved, somebody say he's talking to me, because I'm his beloved. Somebody say, I'm his beloved son or daughter. Which one, one, one. If you're a woman, say daughter. Don't say son. Amen. You, if you're a son, don't say daughter. You say son. Amen. So listen, his, his beloved, beloved, think it's not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Don't think it's strange that you, ain't, you don't know how you're going to pay your bills. Don't think it's strange. Because Raheem don't want to be with you no more. Don't think it's strange. When folks leave the church, don't think it's strange. 
concerning the fire travels and try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice. In so much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. That when his glory <laughs> woo, shall be revealed. Somebody say, Lord, reveal your glory as I stand committed in my trial, in my suffering. I want to display your glory, not my glory, your glory. Hallelujah. Amen. That when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad. With exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, guess what? He's evil spoken of. But on your part, guess what? He is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it is first begin with at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God do what, y'all? Come on, do what? Come on, say it louder. Commit. Let the they who suffer according to the will of God, let them what? Commit. Commit their keeping of their soul to him in what? Well doing as unto a faithful. My God, God is so faithful. He's not going to let you stay committed to him and let you go down. He's not going to let you remain committed to him and him not back you up and bring you out. He is so faithful. That you must stay committed to the keeping of your soul in well-doing. You keep doing well. Stop following folks who don't know God. And it's time to know God for yourself. Come on, give the Lord some praise. That's my time. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Do you really... No, God, it's proven through what your commitment look like in your suffering. Mm. Stay committed, y'all, and watch God work. The Bible says in Psalms 37 and verse 4, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit. Your way unto him. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. In other words, you commit to God and watch him work. Stay committed to your faith. Amen. Stay committed to your faith. Have faith in your believing. Amen. You trust your faith. Trust your faith. I'm going to say it again. Trust your faith. Faith in God. He's faithful. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. But stay committed in your suffering so you can learn who he really is. Because when you don't stay committed in your suffering, you never come to know God and you end up bitter. And bitter people become a stumbling block to those who are looking for God. Hey, listen, tithe and offering time. Glory to God. This is our opportunity to give. Amen. You can give by texting WOFM 
to 71441. That's one way to give. You also can give through Givelify, Givelify, Word of Faith Ministries, Minneapolis, Minnesota. You also can give through PayPal, RobertPM619 at gmail.com. And you also can give also through uh, uh, Cash App, dollar sign, Word of Faith. If this word bless you, amen, it's important that you uh, uh, support uh, the ministry, because we've been a blessing to you. Amen. We feed you the word of God. We building you up, strengthening your relationship with God. And the Bible says it's only by right, according to Galatians chapter six and verse six, that if you who are taught the word must share and support your teacher in all good things, contributing to their support. And the Bible says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked whatsoever man. So that shall he also reap. So God says, listen, if you know me, you know, I won't be mocked concerning this principle, if you sow into the lives of my servants, the same like grace and favor that's on them would be for your benefit. So a lot of people don't know God. They think God just blessed renegades and rebels. Ah, he does it. Check it out, y'all. He does it. The children of Israel said, you know what? We're going up on ourselves. And if God gave us a land, we don't need to listen to what Moses say. We're going over there on ourselves. And Moses said, hey, y'all, y'all go over there if y'all want to. <laughs> God ain't with y'all. See, y'all don't know God. God is in this tabernacle. And he's not going to rock with you in your rebellion. And if y'all go over there, you're going to be defeated by your enemies. And so many of God's people have been defeated. And guess what, y'all? It's not making the kingdom of God attractive because we're proving to the people that we really don't know who God is. Hey, y'all, listen. God so loved the world. He, see, when you know God, you won't, you won't, you won't struggle with giving. Well, I just struggle with giving to you. Well, why are you on my platform? <laughs> why are you on here? You should have been off this thing. <laughs> but you know, pound for pound, it's good eating over here, boy. Good Lord. More gravy? Uh-huh. More syrup? Uh-huh. More jelly? Uh-huh. <laughs> That's Tom and Jerry. We ain't getting it. <laughs> I love that cartoon. Amen. Hey, God bless y'all. I love you. Hey, Merry Christmas. Friday for Christmas Eve. I'll be doing a special message. On Christmas, y'all, for Faithful Fridays, you don't want to miss it. I'll be talking about what Christmas really is all about. Because it ain't about a Santa Claus, a big old dude giving gifts out. Amen. The traditional way. And now, you know, your kids, you know, they, they hate Christmas because Santa Claus never showed up. You understand? He never showed up with the gifts and the, your names and whatnot. And they, they tell you to... uh. Uh, leave some cookies out in, in the milk and you snuck down at, at, at two o'clock in the morning because you was had a hangover and you ate them cookies and stuff. And then you, you, you lie and say, Santa Claus, dig show up. And then, then you know, and then everything is, you know. <laughs> I just mess with y'all. I love y'all. God bless you. Pastor Rob. Peace.